have passed since design work was started on the Arrow at the Avro Aircraft Plant near Toronto. During this time, a tightly scheduled program of design, tooling and test has been accomplished. By the summer of 1957, the first arrow is taking final shape on the assembly line. By September, all the major components have been assembled and most of the major systems installed. On October the 4th, the first arrow is publicly unveiled by Canada's Minister of National Defense. This is the first time that the public is able to see what Avro's big new supersonic interceptor really looks like. By December, installation of hardware and many of the tests on the aircraft systems are completed to the point where engine runs can be started. The engines are run with and without afterburners and further systems checks are carried out. The taxi trials started on Christmas Eve give test pilot Jan Zurakowski an opportunity to become familiar with the handling of the aircraft on the ground. They also permit further checks of the damping system, the brakes, the hydraulics, and many operating tests of the para brake. At this time, there are still many problems that have to be solved and quite a few taxi trials that have to be successfully completed before we can think too much about the attempt on the first flight. Finally, on the morning of Tuesday, March 25th, the Arrow is ready for flight. The two chase aircraft which have been assigned to keep tabs on the in-flight performance of the Arrow, a CF-100 piloted by Spud Pataki and a Sabre piloted by Flight Lieutenant Jack Woodman, take off to assume their positions over the airfield. Nicely. I can see no oscillatory motions of any description in the 
I think all this uh, the merit and the carriage is back to the whole derivation disappears. I think the carriage is making this. That's right, this is the side door which is making. The door which comes and closes the undercarriage in doing. It's fitting against the fuselage. Yes, this is the same door hitting against the fuselage, yeah. But it seems to be pretty, pretty uh, solid there, though. Uh, I don't think, I think it's still got a bit less, one and a half degree. Your, uh, sorry, side slip to right. Uh. That is Roger Jan, as far as I can see from the back, no condition has changed. There was no change. The, the, the radar has all the time a tendency to go to neutral and then about two degrees apart. Uh, switching out the dampers now. Your legs, please, to one. Wind is 40 to 50 degrees, 10 to 15 variable. Thank you. Down to the arrow 201 there, overhead there, 4,000 feet. Any instruction from 32, please. 201, Charles Tarr, runway 32, 32, the wind is northeast at 10, the altimeter is 0, 2, 0, and your number 1 for 32. Down, no? Okay, Jan, give me time. I want to photograph this. The elevator is 
temperature is about 3 degrees or 4 degrees up as far as I can see from here. Ailerons are nice and fresh. Controls here seem to be quite normal and no problem. Wind is 40 to 50 degrees, 10 to 15, 30. So clear zero one, Toronto Tower, clear to land, wheels down, lock 32. Parameter is touchdown. After watching its historic first flight, the huge crowd of Avro employees and Air Force personnel greeted the arrival of the Arrow at its flight base. Because the first Arrow was produced from such complete production tooling, Additional Arrow aircraft are being produced without the delay which usually follows successful first flight of a new aircraft. The success of the design is due in large measure to the intensive testing which has formed a major part of the program so far. Testing on the ground is continuing step by step with testing in the air. This full-scale structural test rig simulates flight loads on a static test aircraft, making it possible to predict many of the actual effects encountered in flight. These static tests naturally assume great significance as ever greater demands are made of the aircraft in flight. On its third flight, the Arrow flew supersonically. On its seventh flight, it exceeded 1,000 miles an hour while climbing. This is still well within the maximum capability of the aircraft, which will be achieved during the development flight test program. With its advanced electronic system and guided missiles, this supersonic Sentinel is designed to guard the Arctic approaches to the Western Hemisphere. The success of the Avro Arrow marks a new chapter in the history of the Canadian aviation industry and a new contribution to Western defense. <laughs>